Hello there, welcome to Exam AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Study Guide. This is episode 24, its title is Azure Service Health. My name is Tim Warner. Today's objective, as usual, comes from the Azure Fundamentals AZ 900 objective domain. We start with Describe Core Solutions and Azure Management Tools, pass into Describe Azure Management Tools, and our specific skill today is Describe the Functionality and Usage of Azure Service Health. You can see on the right part of the slide that timw.info forward slash az900 will bring you to one of my GitHub repositories where you can download an Excel workbook that contains the entire table of contents for this tutorial series, and I've hyperlinked every one of the, those videos for your study and convenience. So what is Azure Service Health? Azure Service Health gives you personalized Azure status in the Azure portal. It's like this. When you're using Microsoft Azure, you're using their infrastructure. Well, tell me something I don't know, Tim. Well, Microsoft has both planned and unplanned maintenance events. This happens all around the world in their worldwide fabric of data centers. That having been said, your deployments likely only span one or a few Azure regions. Azure Service Health is a great place to check from time to time to make sure that nothing on Microsoft's side, as far as an outage is concerned, will affect your services specifically. So it's an important tool to be aware of. Going further, what's nice about Azure Service Health is that you can configure alerts to be proactively notified if Microsoft has an issue on their side, either planned or unplanned, that may affect your resources. You'll also find a nice transparency such that when Microsoft does have an event, say an unplanned maintenance event that did affect your resources, you'll be able to click through and generate the reports that the Microsoft engineers wrote that consist of a detailed post-mortem root cause analysis. This can be helpful because you may need to account for an outage to your customers, and you can rely upon Microsoft's documentation to give you justification. Now, if a Microsoft side outage results in Microsoft violating its service level agreement with you, recall that Microsoft Azure has a separate SLA for each of its generally available features. You will normally be rewarded with a service credit. That's how Microsoft handles that. Related to Azure Service Health is Azure Resource Health. Service Health is more of a global notification of Azure Service Status. Resource Health is a microcosm of that. It's personalized in-portal health status for your individual Azure resources. And the status levels that are reported to you, I'll show you this in our upcoming demo, are available, unavailable, unknown, and degraded. Pretty straightforward, I think. Available means that the Azure backplane is able to, an Azure resource manager is able to contact, say, your virtual machine. If Azure is unable to reach your virtual machine after a pre-configured amount of time, its status level will be marked as unavailable, and you'll see that marked in your resource health blade. Unknown is not something that you want to see because that means that Azure is not sure what the heck's going on in terms of the connectivity of your resource. And then degraded means that some perhaps Microsoft side planned maintenance has your resource online, but its functionality is not 100%. Now let's jump into the demo and I'll give you a whirlwind tour. In this demonstration, we're looking at Azure Service Health and Azure Resource Health, but before we go into the Azure portal, I want to make sure you're aware of the Azure Status public page at status.azure.com. If you're a fan of really simple syndication or RSS, it's a good idea to subscribe to this feed that way. Otherwise, you could periodically load this web page. You also see that there's an advertisement for using Azure Service Health because you'll find that Azure Service Health is personalized only to the Azure regions you've deployed to. This page shows all of the regions worldwide along with their status, good, information, warning, or critical, as you can see on the right. And what I find to be the most useful is to just do a control F or a command F, depending on my operating system, and then look up the service that you're interested in, like app service, let's say, and that'll take you directly to that product. So if we were experiencing inconsistent performance on our Azure app service web applications, and we wondered if the problem could point to Microsoft's side of the cloud responsibility model. This is a quick way to sanity check and see what's going on there. 
Whereas the Azure status page is public and unauthenticated, you know, as well as I do, you can't get into the Azure portal. In particular, you can't get into your Azure Active Directory tenant and your associated subscriptions unless you have a valid account, which I do. Let's use the global search up here to look up Service Health. The icon looks like a little heart, as you can see here. Let's browse in there and see what we've got going on. First, we see a tooltip that tells us we can pin this Service Health world map on our dashboard. Don't mind if I do. Why don't I dismiss this message and click the pin icon, and I'll just call the query world and click OK. We want to see no service issues found. And if you look here, I'm in the United States, and I'm using two regions of the world. Actually, the region picker says that it has four selected. I do use East US and East US 2. And then, of course, global would be Azure services like Traffic Manager that are not limited to a particular region. And is there a fourth entry in here? Let me see. Oh, Central US. That's right. So I am using three regions plus global. And again, no service issues found. That's really great to see. If we scroll down a little bit further, or actually pull this bottom part of the page up, it shows issues resolved in the past seven days. And it looks like there was, in fact, a Microsoft side issue that affected Azure Monitor globally. Uh-oh. And if you click the issue name, it takes us into the health history archives and displays, as I mentioned a moment ago, the details of the root cause analysis of what the problem was and how Microsoft resolved it. And as you can see in this case, there's a tracking ID that you can use as well as a hyperlink you can share with your teammates. You can download the issue summary as a portable document format, or you can even track the issue on your mobile device by using this QR code. I love Microsoft's transparency with this stuff because they understand that all of their customers are relying on Microsoft. It's a matter of trust, isn't it, when you're a customer of a public cloud provider. Over on the left navigation bar under Active Events, notice that the default view is service issues, but there's also entries for planned maintenance that's upcoming that could affect your subscriptions and the regions that you have your resources is deployed in. There's a health advisory setting, and I'm seeing all roses. I'm seeing no advisories. I'm seeing what you want to see on a daily basis. There's security advisories, but notice that it says preview. We're going to get into that subject specifically at the very end of this course, but it's on the AZ-900 exam for you to know that a public preview feature is a Microsoft Azure feature that may be accessible to most of their customers around the world, but the general guidance is that you should only use public preview features in test and development environments because normally Microsoft attaches no service level agreement or SLA to public preview features. There's a health history tab. We're going to look at resource health in just a moment. And then we have health alerts. The health alerts are particularly important because how many Azure professionals think to come into this blade on a regular basis. Much easier, it seems to me, is to set up one or more alerts such that if there's any of these previous types of events that affect your business's Azure regions, you can be proactively notified and even have Azure take action, what's called an action group, as a result of that alert firing. Let's hit the Microsoft Azure link to go to the dashboard. And here we see that service health map that I chose to pin. Very handy indeed. Let's finish up by going to the virtual machines blade. Why am I going there? Well, this is to show you an example of Azure Resource Health. Let me go into my Server 1 virtual machine that's running. And if I do a search in the settings list for health, let's see, I come down under Support and Troubleshooting and hit Resource Health. This, as I mentioned, is a personalized history of health events on this resource. And we can see, as of this recording, this very first entry here happened today. One health event and two health annotations. Uh-oh. Now, you'll notice that some of the resource health isn't actually a problem at all. This annotation that you can see simply records when I started this virtual machine this morning. And that is correct. According to my memory this morning, it was about 9.30 a.m. Central Time that I started this VM. And then as you can see here, this unknown status 
We are currently unable to determine the health of this virtual machine. I find in my own work with resource health that a lot of it is noise, that the point is to try to cut through all the noise to get to the signal. As an Azure administrator, I'm mostly concerned with problems, that is stuff that actively affects the stability, performance, security, and availability of my Azure resources. For learning resources, to learn how to configure Azure Service Health Alerts, I've got a couple doc links here that take you into the Azure docs, timw.info forward slash ASH1. For information on including resource health alerts in your Azure Resource Manager deployment templates, go to timw.info forward slash ASH2. The second bullet point's a little bit advanced if you're not an IT professional, but it's a really handy thing to know how to do because enabling alerts after deployment takes a heck of a lot more time in general than adding a single reference in your deployment template and then deploying N instances of your resources and having those alerts automatically configured for you in Azure Resource Manager. Thank you very much for your participation. I appreciate you very much. Please feel free to leave your comments here on YouTube. You can also send me a direct message or follow me at Twitter. My handle's Tech Trainer Tim. You can find all of my Pluralsight courses. These are much longer than 10, 15 minute clips at timw.info forward slash PS. And lastly, my personal website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying. I'll see you in the next lesson.